So let's now look at alkynes. So remember the first member of the family we looked at alkenes, whereby we say that these have a single bond. And then for the alkenes, remember also we say that their general formula is CnH2n plus 2. After that, we looked at alkenes, and then we saw that uh, the these are members which have at least a double bond in the structure, and the, gener the general formula we saw that it was CnH2n. And then finally, we looked at alkynes, whereby these are now the last in the chemical family. So they have a triple bond, at least a triple bond in their structure. And then the general formula is CnH2n minus 2. So remember, those are the families that we have just looked at them in the previous. So now let's look at alkynes. So for the alkynes, we see that these are unsaturated hydrocarbons which form a homologous series having a general formula of CnH2n minus 2 whereby n again represents the number of carbon atoms. So if we have two carbon atoms, so our value of n is going to be 2. If we have three carbon atoms, the value of n is going to be 3. So remember the general formula for alkynes, it is CnH2n minus 2. So the functional group of this family is a triple bond. So at least there must be a triple bond in the structure for the structure or the hydrocarbon to be called uh, an alkyne. So they basically undergo additional reaction as well as halogenations, which we are going to look at them uh, in the upcoming moments or <laughs> shortly. So as you can see, this is a table summarizing everything of the alkenes from the designated number, the name, the molecular formula, the condensed formula, the skeletal formula, the open formula, etc. So as well, the other thing that you should know is that in the skeletal structure of the alkenes, take note, there is a triple bond. So there are three lines. So if you see any three line in, the in a skeletal structure, know that those represent triple bond. So remember for alkenes, it was just zigzag lines. For the alkenes, at least we had periodic double lines and then the zigzag line continues. So those double lines in alkenes represented a double bond. Now, these triple lines and then the zigzag continues, the triple line represents a triple bond. So those triple lines represent a triple bond. Just as the alkenes, the alkynes don't have methane, so they do not have a methane. Methane does not exist. Just as the alkenes, the methane does not exist. So we only have methane for the alkene, but we don't have methane and we don't have methane. So we don't have a methane because we see that in meth means that we only have one carbon atom. So meth, M-E-T-H, we only have one carbon atom. So this carbon atom in methane, it bonds to four hydrogens. So this carbon atom can be able to form triple bond because its valency is 4. Since its valency is 4, it can be able to form the triple bonds, meaning that one electron will remain to be able to bond with any other atom. But for hydrogen, hydrogen has a valency of 1. It can only and only accommodate one more electron. So it cannot be able to form three bonds because hydrogen automatic, automatically is at its maximum meaning that it can only accommodate one other electron from any other atom. So this means that hydrogen cannot form ethene, uh, it cannot form methane or it cannot be able to form methane because it cannot accommodate the three electrons uh, for the alkynes. It can only accommodate only one electron. And by this reason, we don't have a methane we don't have a methane because of the limitations brought about by hydrogen. So the first member of the alkyne, we have the ethane. So ethane is the first member. Just as the alkenes, ethene was the first member, so the same, same. With alkynes, the first member is ethane. So ethane is always the first member. So remember, if you see the zigzag, take note. If you see triple lines, know that that is an, al an alkyne. If you see double lines, know that that is an alkene. Triple lines represents triple bond. Double line represents the double bond, as you can see in this table. So let's look at nomenclature of alkynes. It's exactly the same as for the alkenes, exactly the same as for the alkenes. It's, it's just the same. We're just repeating. 
So nomenclature, again, it means naming. Nomenclature ni means naming. So it's just like saying naming of alkynes. So we are just naming alkynes. So in the nomenclature, the first nomenclature, the first rule always begins by identify the longest carbon chain having a triple bond. That is always the first rule. Identify the longest carbon chain which has the triple bond. So that is always the first, uh, the first rule in nomenclature. So the second rule is that numbering of the carbon chain must be done in such a way that the, the side towards which this, the triple bond is always given the lowest number possible. So in the, in the carbon chain, the side whereby the triple bond is, that side is the one which is always given the lowest number possible. The, so the side as to, we, as to where the triple bond occurs is always given the lowest number possible. So if there are any substituent groups or if there are any functional groups in the chain, they should be identified and their numbers also identified. So if there is any group or any substituent functional group, so those numbers should be identified and the names of the substituent groups should also be identified. Let's look at uh, questions. Like for example, if you have been asked, draw the structure of the following hydrocarbons and then we have propyne. So propyne, remember that if we have been told propyne, so propyne means that we have how many carbons? Prop means three carbon atoms. So we have only three carbon atoms. That's from the word prop. So remember the first, the first carbon atom is, is called meth. If we have two carbon atoms, it's eth, then prop is three carbon atoms. So we have been told the structure of propyne. So three carbon atoms is prop. The functional group of the family is Y, N, E, because the name ends with Y, N, E. So it means that it is in the alkyne family, because the name ends with Y, N, E. So three carbon atoms, we have prop. Y, N, E symbolizes that uh, we are in the family of alkynes. So the name, the full name is now propyne. So propyne means that three carbon atoms, family of alkynes, so it's propyne, meaning that we have triple bond. So these are the structures of propyne. So the double bond can either be on this side or can either be on that, the triple bond rather, can either be on this side or the other side. So that is the structure of propyne. So let's look at another example. So the other example is 4,4-diethylhex2-ine. 4,4-diethyl. So ethyl from the word ethane. Ethyl, we have two carbons. So 4,4-diethylhex2-ine. So how we had started, the last information is the longest chain. So let's take hex 2 ion. Let's first of all draw hex 2 ion. So in hex 2 ion, hex means six carbons. So draw six carbons like that with a single bond, single bond, draw the six carbons. After doing that, go back to the information. Where is the triple bond? So the triple bond falls immediately after carbon number two because the statement is telling us two ion. So the triple bond is falling after carbon number two. So what happens is that after carbon number two, draw the triple bond. And then that is the structure of hex two ion that you have drawn. Now let's go back to the questions and see what the question is asking. We have been told that we have four, four diethyl. So the branch is eth. Eth means that we have two carbons for the branch. So go back to the information and locate carbon number four. After locating carbon number four, draw the first branch on the top side, write that branch C2H5, and then below it again draw the other branch C2H5. Now, the other covalent bonds that have not been populated, populate them with hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. And simply, that's the structure of 4,4-diethylhex2-ion. So it's as simple as that. So first of all, what you do, what do you do? You draw the first, the longest carbon chain. So after drawing the longest chain, uh, draw the triple bond. So go back to the statement, get the triple bond, it's in carbon number two, draw the triple bond, and then draw the branches. After drawing the branches, populate them with, populate them with hydrogen. So apart from that, we have pentuane ion. Pentuane ion means that we have five carbon atoms, and then after the first carbon atom, we have the triple bond. After that, we have, like for example, three, me three methyl pentuane ion. 3-methyl pent 1 ion. So it means that 3-methyl methyl pent 1. So take that information, pent 1 ion, draw that one. Pent, 5 carbon atoms. So draw the first 5 carbon atoms. 
After that, go back to the information. After carbon number one, we have the triple bond. So after carbon number one, set the triple bond. Go back to the question. I've been told three methyl. So count carbon number three from the side of the triple bond. Count the third carbon. Locate it. Draw the branch of methyl. And then that is three methyl pentuan ion, as you can see. That is three methyl pentuan ion, as, as well as all the other examples that we have. So it's just as simple as that. If you have been told to draw the structure, first of all, get the longest chain. After getting the longest chain, draw that long chain. After drawing that long chain, go back and, and indicate the triple bond where the triple bond is. After getting the triple bond, now go back and fill the branches. 4-4, four, four. fill the branch at 4, the second branch at 4. After finishing up with everything, now write hydrogens uh, uh, to where you have not yet populated the branches. And then you are good to go.